Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. All right. Great. Uh, Hello. Welcome. So today we have our presentation. Um, presentation. So really, you know, the format will be pretty. <laughs> Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, first come, first serve. So <clears throat> you have two projects. Uh, one is related to the Hadoop cluster, and then the other one is related to uh, the sysadmin topic. Okay. So um, basically, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. I can see some of you are coming in. Um, so uh, the way that we're going to try, you know, this, we're trying this for the first time, obviously. So, uh, go ahead and, um, you know, you know, whoever wants to go first, just volunteer. You can present both topics back to back, or you can present, um, one topic today, one topic on Wednesday. Remember we will, uh, we will be continuing these, these presentations, right? So I can see I have some people that want to go first. So Alicia, uh, so your group, I guess. So you guys, uh, I'm not sharing my screen right now. So that means that you guys can share your screens and- uh, I share my screen. Okay, great. So just, you know, give me the names of the, the members in your uh, team, just so that I can make a note of it and then, you know, we can go. Uh, our team is Alicia, Susanna, and May Sassin. Okay. This is part of the report that she's showing now. Okay, great. Uh, and today we plan to only only demo the first one, the uh, Hadoop one, and we will pre present. Yeah, we will present the second one on Wednesday. Okay, that you know that's that's perfectly fine. Okay, so please go ahead. So first, uh, because I have we we do a rehearsal before. First, let me let me stop it first. Okay, so so now it's at the very beginning, and I will start. This is at the master virtual machine, and uh, we we do a, a mountain node one. We have a master and we have a slave, and now uh, it has been started, and I was I will say GPS. So here have job tracker, have secondary. Uh, name node, data node, and here have data node and task tracker. So have start successfully, and then we first we uh, we, we want to see what's the inputs. We download ten books from this website, and then we can see uh, this is uh, ls dash ls uh, output, and then we can see our code. We have two code. Mm, and one is mapper, one is reducer. So this is the at the mapper dot python, and this is a uh, uh, reducer. This is our code, and then we begin to run the Hadoop. Uh, I think it should be the four. Yeah, it should be the fourth one. So let me do it. Yeah, it began, and we just may wait a little bit minutes. Yeah, it just takes a little bit for it to. Oh. Awesome.
How many uh, nodes do you have in your cluster? Oh, we have two nodes. Okay. One is a master, one is a slave. Okay. So uh, this is a slave. We can see here the slave. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we can see the outputs go to this website. So click the job. So it's today's and yeah, we can see here and zero growth. Uh, this is a visual eye. Uh, this is a um, uh, HTTP port and uh, given for to see the result. And we can also to to see there's an output file. We, we can see here this is output to this file and we can also to see this file. Yeah, we have them several times. So, and then run this one. So yeah, that's all for the demo. Okay, which which what did you um what's what the uh, text did you count? Uh, the 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 ten books like like what I show here mm -hmm. is ten books from 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 this website, it's Gutenberg. Right, but you don't know what they are. Just you just grab some random one. Um, uh, I I downloaded them, uh, but I didn't change. This okay. is the default name of the text yeah. I downloaded. Oh, right. Uh, I was just curious. It's okay. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I remember there's some like Sherlock one, uh, some, uh, yeah, there, you know, website, zero six, zero six are from this website. Uh, let me show you. Um, should be the mountain. So, it's here. Yeah, I download uh, seven of his, all, all seven here and three more. So there are seven of them are in this list and three more is another one. I just go to the website and to <laughs> randomly pick some books. Yeah, that's, that's okay. No, that's good. Good. Okay. So, um, so you have the two notes and, and you showed some statistics there. Yes. Great job. Great job. Great job. Uh, what else? If uh, if this is not for demo. Uh no. I mean that that's it. I mean, are you know, you guys did a great job. So, um, are there any questions, guys? Uh, no questions. Oh, no questions. can you, can, you, can, you, can you open the Dropbox for us to submit the uh, reports? I will. I will. Um, okay. This this week, I, I'm going to get all that done. Um, so great job, guys. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Alicia, uh, this is Alicia. Which Alicia is this? Alicia? Lopez. Oh, OK. I think it's. All right, because I know you also work with the other Alicia sometimes. And then, <laughs> yes, yes, we do. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then uh, Shashing and then Susanna. OK. All right. Excellent job. So we would usually clap. I don't know that we're going to do a clap, but you know, imagine. <laughs> you're clapping <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah we do it together to fix some problems okay good excellent guys um so as you can see it's you know pretty straightforward um you know just do you know do your presentations i know hadoop really well so i can tell that you know they got they got it to work um sometimes i would ask you to maybe start it um right there and, and then stop it but for given that this is a little bit more complex I'm not, so you can just have it ready to go. All right, so, uh, so yeah, go ahead, are there questions? All right, so uh, if, if the next group wants to go, just go ahead and uh, share your screen. I think um, me, Yash, and Alex are gonna go now. Okay, so, okay, so that's Joshua Thomas, correct? Correct, correct. And who did you say? I'm sorry. Yash. Yash, okay. And then Alex. Alex. What's his name? Um, Which Alex? Luis. Okay. Luis Gutierrez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Everyone calls me Alex. Okay. Uh, Yash has then, to share his screen. Yeah. Uh, hey, Josh, are we doing the 
uh, Hadoop, right? No, we're doing. Uh, well, we each did our Hadoop individual because um, we only were able to get single node working. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to do our um, our group project right now. You're going to do yeah. uh, your top your selected topic. Correct. Yes. Okay. What was the name of that? Ansible. Do you have slides? Yes. Yeah. Let me share my screen really. Bring quick. up this the slide. I'll let you guys introduce it. Uh, just a second here. Able to see it? Is everyone able to see it? Yep. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Let me just go ahead and start. Uh, so yeah, our topic is Ansible. It's essentially, and it was done by uh, me, Josh, and Alex. Ansible is essentially um, a f open uh, source software that is used worldwide. Um, it's essential today, especially if you're working as a system uh, administrator. I mean, you have to uh, manage lots of uh, notes or host in a way. And you want to automate as much as you can to prevent to save a lot of time on your hands. So essentially, what this tool does is it, it automates anything that you can think of in your network, and it does it remotely using a, a secure connection. Use it, it, it. It uses SSH to maintain, configure, and uh, centralize uh, your network. And it's compatible with Unix, Windows, and uh, and uh, Apple users out there, <laughs> also. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So, how An Ansible works is uh, it's very easy to use. There's little to no configuration whatsoever, other than there's two things you have to configure to make this thing happen. So, essentially, as you can see from the diagram, that all your hosts or how many hosts that you're managing in a company, whether it's 1,500, I mean, you can manage as much as you want. And it could be done with little to no configuration, easy to use. So there is essentially a master that would be your you as a system administrator controlling uh, the employees' configurations of their uh, devices. And as you can see, there's two two files that you have you that you must com that you must configure. One is the playbook. Playbook is essentially what it is is you have to uh, it's programmed in YAML, and that the playbook is your task for your host. So if you want to run a script on a remote host, then you would do it through YAML, your playbook. And the, another file is host file. Host file is essentially to keep track of your host that your slaves in a way and the master, right? So that's what Ansible is. Uh, let's move on to the, let's move, let's look into further. I think Josh can uh, explain the install. Um, install. Yeah, so these will be the commands to install of the program. Um, Obviously, you want to make sure your um, your this is done off of Ubuntu, by the way. But you obviously want to make sure it's up to date. Um, and then you will do the following commands. You would have to add an additional repository just to make sure that you can grab the correct um, uh, tool. And then, um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to install it. Actually, excellent. Okay. And this is a setup for Ansible. So we're gonna explain how to set this up on uh, on the master side. So how Ansible works is uh, since it uses a secure connection, it uses SSH. That means you need to copy uh, your SSH key to be trustable on the remote host. So this is the commands for it essentially. Uh, let's for in this example, I have a seed at this IP address, which is your slave. And I am copying uh, the SSH uh, copy ID command to copy my key generated. As you can see in this command here, the first command that says SSH key gen, we generate the key and then we copy that key from the masters to your slave. So the master is trustable to be in control of your slave when a connection is made. Okay. Uh, and then here is this shows you uh, here it says uh, sudo apt get install ssh pass. 
So this is just command to set uh, Ansible up running. Let's move on. And now we're gonna talk about a uh, host file configuration. Uh, as we uh, talked about previously, there's two configurations, correct? The, the playbook and the host file. Host, football, uh, host file, as uh, explained, it, it contains a list of your slaves. And uh, in this example, uh, we did the command to access the host file. As you can see, uh, it's sudo. You can use nano. You can use uh, uh, get it. Um, it's, it's up to you. But this is the pathway to access that file. And here is a screenshot that uh, shows that there is this client called Ansible client. I just named it Ansible client just to just for the simplicity. And in here, you have to specify the client's, uh, your slave in a way, um, IP and uh, SSH user uh, username and the password for that client, your, your sl that slave specifically to make that secure connection happen. And you can have multiple hosts, as you can imagine, you can have like 500, if you're working as a system admin, you would not have just one slave, right? You'd have multiple slaves in this uh, file configure host file configuration. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, and the playbook. Playbook is uh, the second configuration that is essential to make uh, Ansible work properly on the master's system. And playbook is essentially, think of it as uh, like literally what it means, playbook. Like what do you want to do with the ho remote host or the slave in your network? Do you want it to add users? Do you want it to um, run scripts? Do you want uh, to use it for system an uh, analysis? Uh, you, or you can, if you're working uh, even as a div uh, like a developer, software developer, and you want to send files or access files, you can do it with through playbook. Let's look at the first playbook. The first playbook is, uh, in this uh, first playbook, all we're doing is as it displays that you have to uh, specify the name. We just called it sample book. It could be anything. And this is run in Yelman. And the host is Ansible. You could have multiple hosts here, right here, because that this is you're specifying like this uh, configuration to be run on the slave. And the remote, uh, remote user is Sid for SSH username. And become, become true means uh, like you want root privilege when you make that connection to your remote slave. And the task that we are, uh, I named it copying file from local host to a remote host, which is master to slave. And uh, the source is your location file, which is index.html. This is your location. Destination is where you want to copy this file to at, at a remote host, which is, uh, this is a path for Apache local host where the, the user can go to this, uh, can access this website if you want uh, to develop the website, right? Uh, playbook two is, in this playbook, we, we copy as, as uh, most of it is very similar, the name stays the same, host stays the same, remote user is Sid. In this case, we do not use a root privilege because it is not necessary. So we don't have become true here. Um, first, we copy a file. So previously we did a script uh, for this, pro, uh, for this uh, class that adds users. And adding users is uh, a regular task that uh, system admin performs day to day, right? So this is something good to have as a playbook for your master. So we have a, we have a, a chemistry group t t TXT that has a list of chemis uh, chemistry group uh, names that needs to be added as users. And we have a script here that adds users and assigns them password for it at a remote, uh, at a, at for that like remote slave. And what we're doing in this is we're just copying those two, we're copying the, the names and the script to the slave. And in the third playbook, we actually run the script. And as we, when we implement it, you, you will see that, that the user have been added once we run the script remotely to the slave on the slave's machine. As far as implementation goes, I can, I think, uh, just can explain the command line.
interface of yeah. running. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, as you can see, the first playbook is the uh, example, the first example you're talking about, obviously. Um, but you do see acts, uh, acts become passed. Um, this is because like it requires sudo for this um, command. So this allows you to actually type in the password for the command to actually work on the um, on the slave machine. Otherwise, if you don't, um, it won't actually run it. Um, but this is actually the running of the command. Um, and as you can see, the playbook two does not require sudo, um, you know, super user use. So therefore, we don't uh, pass that variable to it. And the same reason why we pass it on the third one. Um, but yeah, so the Ansible dash playbook um, and then typing the playbook name is the actual um, command to run the script on the uh, slave computer. This just shows the explanation of how you would uh, do it on the command side, on the slave side. And this is uh, just to check for connectivity. If you're having connect connection issues or whether it's your script that is not working or your uh, your playbook that is not working properly, you can uh, just ping to your um, your slave. Essentially, we well, in the host file, we call it Ansible as here, we would call it Ans Ansible client as well. And you can say you can see that it's success in this case that you are able to connect to the slave. And now it's time to implement. So let me just get this set up really quick. Just a second, please. I just try and as Hadoop here. Okay, what is going on? We're seeing your slides, guys. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, let me pull up. <laughs> no, welcome to this new world. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out my password. This is a worse sign to. Come on, Yash. <laughs> uh, it's the power's password. No, actually, That's I changed it, so uh, not really for me. Oh. That's yeah. okay. My Hadoop VM has just completely crashed on me. Uh, what was the password? Here, just a second, guys. Sorry. Sure. Okay. I don't know why I'm I, I'm like brain farting right now. It's like the worst time. <laughs> I'm gonna check it really quick. You got this, buddy. All right, we have some luck, okay. And this is uh, the slave. This, uh, are you able to see SID too, VM? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yes. perfect, thank you. Uh, yeah, and this is, I think it's just starting up now, just a second. I don't know, I think I have three VMs running at the same time, it might cause some slow. So here I would like you to see the, so if you do cat playbook three, so this is essentially the script that I was explaining. I'm, I don't think I'm going to just go over this again. As you can see, these are the playbooks here that I have. Mm -hmm. And, and we will just uh, run, run it and see, see how it works. Okay. And this is the, obviously the host that I was explaining. And I'll explain it here. Here you can see that I only have one slave at the moment. 
let's move on to the playbook. So I'm gonna in this uh, scenario, I will run, I will run uh, the add user side to prevent any time being wasted. So in this uh, playbook tool, as I explained, I'm just gonna copy those files over to the uh, the slave, and it's gonna ask for the the root privilege password when I run the script. And as you can see, the changes made and three OKs, that means everything is working properly. There was no errors in this connection. And here, uh, as we called it sample playbook as the name and it's, uh, we named the task. One of them was copy the file from local host to remote host, which is that uh, this one was the, the name, the text file for names. And this one was the script itself to the remote. If we check on the other side, you can see that there's two scripts that have just been added, which is the chem group and the script. And now we, we can run it. Run playbook three, which will require, which will require a uh, root privilege. Okay, that was, that's weird. Is okay, Phil. No file. It says uh, error, uh, no such file, directory chem group dot txt. You have the wrong name or something? Oh, yeah, most uh, possibly. Let me just check here. There is, it can be. Is it on the slave? That is it's asking for the, um, the location of it on the slave. Uh, home said desktop add. Kim group, as you can see here, it is here. Oh, that's really weird. Um, we can use a different example because I don't know why it shouldn't. Did you transfer the text file over? Yeah, it's there. Anyways, but uh, let's just use a different example just for the sake of simplicity at this point. So in this case, what we can do is uh, run a Apache server on the host side and we'll run uh, playbook one. And as far as I know, playbook one does require a root privilege. Therefore, we're gonna just do that. And you can see changes were made. So if we go on a SID two and check if uh, that file exists, we can just, uh, go on the local host on the web browser and find out if it's there or not. And you can see that it's the, the, the web page does exist in here and changes means that it was actually moved from one destination to the slave. And there you have it. So this is Ansible automation. Great. So so you you sent files. Can you? What if you just wanted to change some parameters on the machine? Have you guys like like configurations? Yeah, like a configuration. If you know, like etc folder type of configuration or. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. etc. Yeah, we can certainly can do that. 
So you could have gone to ETC and then maybe just replaced a file or, or? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. essentially in this scenario, what we did was we copied the index.html file over to, here, let me just. The var www, is it? Yeah. Yes, exactly, var www. So, that, so, this, so you sent an actual HTML file of some type, but, but I mean, if you were, let's say you were configuring so for instance, cron, and you wanted to just send cron tabs or something. Oh yeah, right. Or you you certainly can do that. You can uh, that you can you run cron jobs actually. Okay. Okay. You can you can run cron jobs and uh, various things on. If you can think of it, you can definitely implement it. As you can okay. see, I'm I'm not sure. I didn't get this error last time as uh, I was implementing mm -hmm. the script, yeah. but it certainly does work. I know that for sure. Yeah. I okay. mean, he has the option to become a root uh, privilege and you can run whatever root privilege has as a user. You can do those tasks remotely from master to slave. Mm -hmm. And Ansible needs SSH. SSH is essential to this. Uh, it's very yes. essential. So if you do not copy the, the, the keys, uh, the, the key generate, you mm -hmm. copy those and make it trustable on your remote slaves. So okay. they're able to connect to it. Okay. Yeah, is uh, and that's our project. Okay, great. For, um, uh, yeah. And yeah, good. Is, Are there any questions, guys? In the audience, any questions? All right, great job again. Virtual clapping here. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Uh, is, is that okay if I just go ahead and uh, just uh, ex you, just okay? Now you want to do your Hadoop project? Is that what you want to yes. do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If that's uh, hold okay. on. Yeah. yeah sure. Let me just make a note. The same group. Oh, uh, uh, this is individual, individual because yeah. uh, I was able to only get the oh, single okay. note so working. Yeah. So this is just Yash. Yes. Yeah. Doing Hadoop. Okay. All right. Got it. Great. Okay. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the previous, as you can see from here, I just, just for test purposes, I have already tested to make mm -hmm. sure this was working properly. Um, let's just go ahead and start uh, Hadoop first. How many nodes do you have? I have one node. Is that, is a one node? Okay. Yes. Okay, so everything is good to go. It's running and we can verify by this command, JPS, and you can see that data node, name node, and all the nodes are, are up and running. Next, uh, for the word count, we want what I did is, uh, I made a directory called test and in that test, I made another directory called books. If mm -hmm. we go to that directory, it will have a list of two books that we're gonna use it to word count, as you can okay. see here. Okay. Yes. And then let's, uh, this command is, and we are going to do the word count now. Okay, here, let me make this bigger, just so everybody can actually. So you're using, let me see. Um... For the command, you're using a. Okay, so this is a com This is a path to the jar file. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. And this is the function word count. Okay, so you're using the built-in word count of Hadoop. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And uh, we specified the path of where the word count should, uh, the, the, what we are word, count, word counting, which yep. is the two books. And this is the output. The output is gonna be in this path. We send it. Usually it takes uh, a little, time to run the job.
as you can see, it's uh, it is successful. Map 100%, reduce 100%. If you go to this website here, the local host that is provided by Hadoop, and look at utilities, browse the file system, and go to test. This is the directory that we specified for our outcomes to go to. And this is says success. And here we should have, if we download it, Let's see overview here. Okay, let's do another way, sorry, no why. It's doing that. We'll go to that directory specifically. Do ls here. Oh, okay. Now what we can do is actually we have to go to here. And you can see this is the second the other directory books. No such file directory that's weird. Was because of this. Oh, yeah, Hadoop command. Sorry, All right? Should work now. Yeah, as you can see here, that there there was the job was successful mm -hmm. for the word count. Right. I was trying to download the file to make it more simpler to see that it did work, but I don't know why I'm having an issue with that. But as you can see with the cat command, you certainly can see sure. the output of the success and it did, it, it did run successfully. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Great. All right. Great job. Uh, any questions for Yash? I volunteer as tribute to go next. Okay, great. All right, great. So the next person is um, Zach. Is that you, Zach? Okie dokie. So it was just working a minute ago. So if it's not working, I, I you might see me have a breakdown. You yeah, you need to share your screen. Yes, and, sir. And uh, state what you're what what you're presenting. I'm presenting my Hadoop. Okay, Hadoop. Just you. Yes, sir. And is it's um, multi node or single node? Single node. Okay. It is single node. So um, here's, here it is working in my local host. Mm -hmm. um, you can see all the data here that I have. Um, okay. I can also show you the um, file system. So here's um, when I did my tests. So I got um, Alice in Wonderland at work, but I'm going to demonstrate um, Brahm Stroker's Dracula. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to place Dracula into the Hadoop file system. And I do that by running this command and praying to every god in existence that it works. <laughs> and it looks like it's in. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is to make sure that it works as I'm shaking like a leaf. Uh, I'm going to see if I can cat it, see if it's there. And it's there. We out here making moves, boys. Um, over here, I am already navigated to where my MapReduce is located. So I'm going to run the script right now. This is nerve wracking. All the marbles here. So this is me calling the MapReduce script. I'm specifying the word count that I want. That's the process I want to run. Dracula.txt is the book. And this is the file that I'm going to call it on the output. And I'm having my fingers crossed that it's working. And it looks like it's working. Um, work. So there's the percentages right there showing what I got so far. It'll eventually finish the map, then the reduce. Alrighty, the next thing that I have to do is I have to list the directory of where that example out file is to get a code that is at the end, or that could happen. Un momento, boys, give me one second. This was literally working a second ago. Sometimes when you run it and it has a name, and then you rerun that and there's a clash in the name. It could be I'm good now. It was it was because I had a it was because I had a capital H instead of a lowercase H. Okay, great. So I have to yes, so what I have to find is I have to find this code here at the end, the part dash R dash zero zero zero. Okay. To get that to finish outputting what I need. So I'm going to paste that there. I believe, let me double check my notes, make sure I got that right. Put that over here. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, oh, you know, having the cat command would be helpful because all I did was list it, so cat. So there's every word that is being used, but to be even more persnickety, I'm going to grep Dracula because it's all about him. And so the name Dracula is used 15 times, and then in reference, he's used all these separate times. Right. So that is my Hadoop cluster. Here's also, again, the, um, the here it is functioning in localhost. Um, and then if we look at the file system again, we now have the Dracula examples right here. All right, great. Excellent. Um, are there any questions for SAC, guys? Nope. All right, no questions. So great. let's see. Can I have, um, can I have permission to leave? Uh, my mother-in-law is being rushed to the hospital. Sure, yeah. Uh, you. Just, you still need to present the other topic, correct? Yes, sir. Can I do that on Wednesday? Oh, you can, yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, so who wants to go next? Josh is next. Who's going next, sorry? Josh. Yeah, go ahead. Josh Phillips, okay, go ahead and. Yeah. All right, I'm by myself. Um, I did the Hadoop project. Uh, hold on. All right, so the trend that has been set so far, is that people are showing their map reduces and all that, but I'm not gonna highlight that. I'm gonna just highlight how I actually configure my Hadoop, loop, Hadoop cluster. I did a single node. So obviously, single, node as or know, single. Single, okay. Yes. Obviously, as we know, this is, isn't new to us. Hadoop is defined as an open source software framework for storing data and running applications on clusters. 
of commodity hardware. It provides massive storage for any kind of data, enormous, pro enormous processing power, and the ability to handle limited concurrent tasks or jobs. There are two types of cluster types, the single node and multi-node. The single node uses only a single machine, whereas multi-node will use multiple. When I find up, there were three prerequisites that I have to follow. The first one was I had to install Java. The second one was adding a dedicated Hadoop user. And lastly, I had to configure SSA. Um, there are several methods that I found, but I only follow two different ones. Uh, the first method is obviously you can install um, OpenJDK version 8 and JRE, or you can go by the other method and install the Python software tools, update them, and then update and then install Sun Java. When you install it, you can type in Java version to see which version that you're running. This is the result of the Java version that I'm currently running on my uh, VM. And then obviously to add a Hadoop user, you add the user. Um, when I added to the group, obviously it was already in existence. So that was that result. Then I added the HD user in the Hadoop group. And then this was the result. So like yes to confirm it. And then my Hadoop user has been created. To configure SSH, you have to enable the local machine with the new key. And then that's this command right here. And then next you have to change the permissions and then sign out of the user. That um, is dependent on what, what um, instructions you're following. Some say log out and others don't. In order to test it, you can either use SSH localhost if you didn't log out, but if you did log out, you can use SSH HD user at localhost. And then as you can see, these were my, um, this was the result of my configuration for SSH. Next, you have to disable IPv6. Um, it is, needs to be disabled that Ubuntu is using 0.0.0.0 IP for a different Hadoop configuration. Um, I typed in the highlighted code within pseudo g edit, et cetera, uh, syscto.com, and then reboot it using pseudo reboot. And then I typed this code right here. And then if you got one, then that means that it's disabled. And if you got zero, then that means that it isn't enabled. So since you want to disable, then you want to see a one for your final value. Then you have to install Hadoop from the Apache site. I downloaded the one that is before the latest version, which was 3.1.3. .3. And then once you install it, you have to follow the different commands and then, um, well, obviously with super user permission, uh, change ownership, all of that type of stuff. And then if you do this correctly, you'll be able to view the different list of files in the Hadoop, in the Hadoop directory, which is shown on a screenshot to the right. These are all the different files that were in my Hadoop folder. Then to update the bash file. And then uh, um, this is, the, the script is pretty long. I just took a screenshot of the actual script. And then I took a screenshot of me pasting the script into the bash file. Then you have to configure the directory. And then you have to make the directory, change ownership of it, and then change the modifications of it. And then these are the three scripts that have to be ran for. Then there are several files that need to be edited and configured for Hadoop. Depending on the instructions that you follow, the number may change. But these four are necessary. And then the yarn one is necessary depending on the instructions that you follow. And then this is a screenshot of the Hadoop EMV. All you have to do is just uh, add your export your Java home. It took me about five hours to actually get this to work because I forgot to remove the hashtag in front of it and it didn't work. And then once I moved the hashtag, everything worked like it was supposed to. Then for the MapRed site, you add the code in between the configuration. This is what it looks like. Same thing for HDS site, um, same thing here, add in a code in between the configuration. And then yarn, if you choose to do so, you add the code in between the configuration. And then you wanna format your, uh, you wanna format the system and then using this code right here. And then this is the result 
of the format goes on and on. So that's why I cut off, but it's longer than what you see here. Then you start and stop your single no close single no cluster. Um, this is how you start it. My some says Hadoop and then others go by your version. This is my version, so that's why it looks like this. And then you can check it with Nestat and then you stop it the same way. So just to prove that I did set myself up correctly, I will share my screen. And as you can see already, I SSH into my HD user, and then I started my Hadoop, and then you can see the name modes, data modes, secondary name mode, resource manager, no manager, um, and then you have to uh, nest that into PL, TEN, specifically grep Java, and once you do that, you should be able to see all of your different configuration, specifically these, the ones that are in red, because that we grab Java individually. And then to stop it, all you do is just change the script from start to stop. Oh my goodness, it added too many P's. There we go. And then that's that. So I'm pretty much pretty much want to highlight the configuration of it as opposed to the map reduce. Um, so that's all I have, Professor. Um, I'm, this is the only um, this presentation I'm gonna do today because I'm at work right now. And so I'm gonna do my um, other one Wednesday, but that's all I got. So can you demo uh, running a count or, or something like that? Um, I don't actually have a file with me. But if you want me to try that Wednesday, I can. Yeah, on Wednesday, just uh, just demo it. Otherwise, great job. Yep, that's all, all I got. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Who wants to go next? I'll be going next. Um, this is Angel. Okay. Maybe you can hear me. Perfect. Yeah, I can hear you. Are you just presenting by yourself or are you in a group? Yes, I'll be doing both by myself. Okay, that's fine. All right. Are so, you presenting both today? Yeah, it'll be nice and quick. I have them all set up properly. Okay, go ahead then. Uh, one <clears throat> second. And are you able to see? Yes, sir. Let's see. I'll be doing my project B first. Um, little Zen map tool and I'll go ahead and explain what it is as well. Um, so this is the power uh, PowerPoints. The first screen is the menu. So as you can see, there's three things I'm going to talk about and cover on it. The first one is of course, what is Zen map? What is a tool and a little bit of comical sense. What is it that you speak of? The second slide will be the installing method or the process, and the third one is how to use it. So here we go. Uh, ZenMap is actually just the uh, GUI interface for NMAP. Uh, it is the official security scanner, according to the information I found on the web. It is a graphical front end. It's very popular, and it's command. And it replaces the command line, so like that, you you can at least kind of see what your you know the command that you input what it's what's what it's doing and what's happening in the background it'll actually show you all the information and you you won't be missing a single thing the installation is actually very easy as you can see it's just one line of com uh, one command line it is a sudo app install zenmap and y once installed it is actually the icon you see at the bottom and it's like big brothers watching you. You know, simple, fun, elegant. And lastly, uh, the way I portion this is going from top to bottom, left to right. As, uh, and of course I'll, I'll show it, showcase it a little, but this I kind of want to just show you the main points. The top left picture uh, image is going to be the, the opening page 
in here, you're gonna see the target profile, the scanning option towards the right, and then at the bottom, you'll see the options for the command line, kind of like Wireshark. You'll be able to search along the lines of like Nmap, uh, TCP, and so forth. And then at the bottom, it'll display all the items like the, uh, the, po the port and host, the topology, and then the details. Uh, going to the bottom, I'm sorry, going to the middle image on the left, uh, the way to properly work it is you would go to profile the profile tab and select the edit selected profile uh, Opening the bottom image and in there you can actually do more of a Detailed search uh, meaning you could scan ping script target and source the information and again I'll kind of just cover it real fast Once you then select the item you go back to the front page uh, which is the top right image, uh, you select the target, so with the target being the 192.168.012.10 IP range, and the drop-down gives you a selection of what you can actually search or scan. So as you can see, it actually gives you a whole bunch of items you can work with from an intense scan at the top to a regular scan at the bottom, or even a slow, comprehensive one. And lastly, bottom right screen is showing you kind of like the output of what happens when you uh, hit the scan button. So that is the um, PowerPoint. Like I said, nice, sweet, and simple, getting right to the point. Um, so this is going to be in. Uh, Give it a second. There we go. Okay, so the, uh, I have two VMs open. The second one is for the Zen map. Once inside, you literally just type in Zen map. As you see, it's right off the bat. You have normal Zen map, and then you have as administrator or root. I'll just do the root. Uh, asking you for the password, like if it was on the command line. Except again, it's it's a uh, GUI interface. Um, so as I was saying, when you open it, it's right to the point. This screen shows you all of the items pretty much that you would be working with. And you could think of this line right here as the command line. Uh, right here, you're gonna be doing the target range and you could work with any IP on the system as well as selecting the, from the drop-down box what type of scan you'd be working with. I'll get to that in a second. The tabs include scan, tools, profile. It's pretty self-explanatory. Under each of them, you could actually even compare, filter, and then save your results. And then down here, you can, again, you know, create a new profile or, like I said, you know, edit the information. Uh, under the scan profiles, what we're, uh, tabs, what we're gonna look at, you would kind of go down the list. You can actually do a lot more uh, than what you would probably need it for. But what I, what I wanna get to on this is the fact that you can uh, see everything at one go instead of just typing line by line, enter, enter, you can actually just select everything you need to get on, move on to the next one, and then you would then just hit save and it would select it and prompt those options and apply them. You would then come up here, and again, you could select the different variables, uh, or I'm sorry, protocols you could work with. Uh, so like TCP, uh, Nmap, and so forth. But because this is the official Nmap GUI, I'm gonna go with that. You would scan, and then it would start uh, getting all the information. Uh, this is just a, an IP I just threw in out of nowhere, so I don't even know if they'll actually grab anything but I wanted to show you that that is how ZenMap works. Down here, you would start getting all the information uh, and I'll kind of let that load. You could go through the other tabs, the protocols and I'm sorry, the ports and hosts, which would give you all the information you need. The topology, it'll actually create the little map and then the details themselves as well as previous scans that you actually created. Um, so do you have any quick questions on that? No, I don't. I think it's a good, it's a good demo. I understand. Perfect. And again, I want to make it nice and quick. So next I'll go ahead and cover the Hadoop cluster. 
uh, just it. open it. Do you guys have any questions uh, on this topic, guys? Questions? Oh. Not for me. Okay, great. So it seems it's clear. All right, uh, Angel, please go ahead with your next topic. All right, so for the Hadoop, I'm going to cover the Word doc I have real fast, just because I, it'll, it's easier to, to just see everything I have up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, again, cover it real fast over VM. The first screen right here is the book that I downloaded from uh, that one uh, page, Gu Gutenberg, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I saved it to the front screen, I'm sorry, to the desktop as book.txt. So just showing you that it's right there. The second image is the fact that you have to start the service. And so that would be the command for start all.sh. Once this is started, you're able to actually communicate with the local host that it's gonna be um, uploaded to. And then again, I'll go into that in a minute, uh, just so you can kinda see where it's gonna pull the data and then output it. The third image is, mm -hmm the copy command that's gonna send that TXT file uh, for our book, which is right here, and it's gonna send it into my account or um, my tab inside of the localhost, and I'll actually show you the, uh, the path on there as well. And then the third is um, the Hadoop command. Uh, I am also doing a, um, a word count command from the uh, Ubuntu library. And again, it's gonna select the path of the book and I'm sorry it's gonna select the book inside of the path and then it's gonna recopy it or repost it as the book outputs once that's done and I actually just go into VM and show you the rest did you do a single node or multi node I did a single node okay. so Pretty much here's where I have the commands. Again, you would start the S, uh, the S you would start the service, and copy, for me, I copied the book onto the path, and then this command would be the one that I run so that it actually copies it over, or applies it, I should say. And it took the command. I would then go over here. I already made sure I opened it beforehand, but so you could see that it is active. I just refreshed it. I would go to my utilities and my file system. Give it a second. Here we go. So again, the path started with user. So, so I'll go into my user. I would then follow the my accounts, which is part of my last name and all my PNW account. Here is the book that I copied originally. Um, I kind of did this beforehand, sorry. But what it would do is it would copy the book TXT onto here. This wouldn't even exist yet. And what I would do is go into a uh, book. I would actually see the information out of it and download. Um, just waiting for it. I'm oh, sorry, did it. Here we go. So then you would so do the save file. And what it's gonna do, it's actually gonna open it as the word count. I'm sorry, that's the actual book. The output file, I'm sorry, the output file that it created is the one that's gonna be as. So inside, once it's on here, um, I have two files and I can easily uh, go to it on the, on the um, what's it called, the terminal. The location where it's saved to is the part R, all these O's location. Once I click on it, this is the one that's gonna give me the word count. So same thing, I would save the file, go ahead and open it, and there you go. All right. So as you can see, it does the entire book. Excellent. All right, good job. All right, all good to go. Uh, are there any, do you, you wanna say anything else? <clears throat> um, not unless there's something else I'm gonna say. <laughs> no. All right, so you presented both things, correct? All right, good. Any questions for uh, Angel? All right, thank you. Uh, next person or group? 
I'll be uh, my group, uh, Deanna, Alicia, and Jackie. Okay. And we'll be presenting our Hadoop. Okay. Okay. So here's my VM. I am using Ubuntu 16 and I used Ubuntu 2.10. And then here it is running. And I used um, one node due to the capacity on my computer. I could only do one node. Uh, one. We did one book and it was the Waterloo book. And we did a word count. So then I'm gonna go So what we need to do in order to, we need to try to get the book, which is Waterloo book right here, the text, we need to get it over to our directory, as right now it is not in our directory. With this command line. It will then bring it to the directory in an input file, which will show that the book is right here. Following that, we need to then run the MapReduce command. And then this would take the book from the out from the input file and then run the command which will run the mapper and the reducer and then they'll compile it all into a output file right here it shows that the map reduce job is about to run Mapper has 100% gone through. And now the reducer. So then, refresh. There's the output. If you click on the output, it will then show this is a success file that will show detail on how the job was successful or non successful. Let's see that the file is right here. It was successful. So now I'm going to download the file. Save it. And then it has been saved. And then I'm going to run the file. Oh no. go go to downloads there it is and that is our map reduce Great, great job. All right, um, are there any questions for them? Okay, excellent. Uh, are you gonna be presenting your other topic today or are you gonna wait until Wednesday? Oh, we're gonna do that Wednesday. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so that was Jackie Toretto, Alicia Guerrero and Diana McPartland, correct? Yes. Okay, great. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. All right, next group. Uh, my group can go next. Uh, who is this? Uh, Brandon Zverev. Oh, Brandon, okay, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. I'm in a group with Ryan Sparling and Sydney Smith. Okay, hold on. Ryan Sparling and Sydney. 
Smith. All right, so just to confirm, confirm Sydney Smith, Ryan Sparling, and Brandon Bearhead, correct? Yep. Okay, excellent. You can yep. see the, uh, the PowerPoint right now, right? Yep. Yeah, we're seeing your PowerPoint. Okay, awesome. What are you, are you guys and doing, which one, the, your topic? Yes. Yeah, we're doing the presentation topic. Oh, okay. One second. There we go. So we decided to do Fog, which is an imaging software. Um, essentially, for anyone who doesn't know what imaging is, imaging, when it comes to um, networking and computers, is pushing out a version of an operating system to computers that are on the network. So, for instance, like I worked for Monster Schools and we're one-to-one -one with everybody with their uh, the laptops for the students. So every summer we have to image about 2,700 computers and get those set up properly. So while we've got our own solution, this would also be good for systems administration when you need to, you know, put your own custom stuff on a bunch of computers. Um, Ghost actually has been around for a while. It was developed by Norton, but obviously, you know, that's proprietary. So somebody took the basic idea of that and um, made it for Linux. And basically, the idea is that you would boot the computer that you're looking to put the image on to its network adapter, and then it'll go and um, basically find the imaging server and pull down the image. Uh, that's the basic idea to it. So then um, it will, like it says right down here, you can, um, image an entire lab of computers taking up very little bandwidth because of the way that this is done because it uses multicast. Um, and you can do a lot more with it and it can be used on pretty big networks. Um, but we're just gonna highlight being able to pull an image and image a machine freshly. So um, from here, I'm gonna let Sydney go over everything a little bit. Okay, can, can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, we, I can hear you now, Sydney. Okay, cool. Okay, so let me share my screen. Or no, I'm still doing this. Okay, so when you're installing Fog, it's pretty easy. You It's supported on a multitude of operating systems like CentOS and Fedora and Ubuntu. Um, you just download, they've got a little install tar.gz. So you, you unzip it and it asks you a few questions about like your network. So you can actually run fog with multiple nodes like storage nodes and processing nodes. We're just running a single node. You can also set it up as a DHCP server to handle like network traffic and stuff, which we have because it's just a virtual network. And then once you run the install script and it installs everything, it's got this nice little uh, web client that you can see on the right. Can you go ahead and go to the next one, Ryan? All right, so as far as taking an image in Fog, it's pretty easy. The first thing you do is you go into Fog and you you set up just a, an empty image spot. And then you, you then boot from the host that you're wanting to pull the image from. You network boot and it'll, it'll boot into Fog. And Fog will pull the image from that machine. And then, well, it's so like you, you, you can have it pull it whenever you want. It's so like you can, Say if you were doing, we're, we did Ubuntu, but say you're doing Windows, you could use uh, SysPrep and like prepare it all, have it all ready to go. And so that way when you pull it, it's got all the drivers and everything it needs. All right, go to the next one. And this is just an image of when it's pulling from Fog. All right, it, you can see that it uses free open source software part clone in it. As far as pushing an image, it's, really a very similar process. You, you boot into the machine that you want imaged, you boot it into fog and you can assign a task where it'll automatically push, pull that image down from the network onto that machine. And then as you can see, whenever it's done imaging, um, it'll boot the drive and it'll be like whatever drive you copied. In our case, it was an Ubuntu uh, 1604. 
So that was the end of his. I'm going to actually demo pulling an image down. Let me just share my screen. Screen two, and there we go. Okay, so as of right now, we're on the Fog server VM. What we need to do, well, I want to show you is when we go to images and we see all the images, we've got one image already made just to show you guys how it works. Um, the image size after it's on, installed on the client is 5.6 gigs. It's got the uh, capture date. And then if we go to hosts, I have two hosts registered. I've got the master host, which is what I pulled the image from. And then we've got the slave. Uh, slave one, which is one of the the computer that we're going to image, and in order to push an image out, you just go to these little tasks, and you hit deploy. It'll ask you a couple of questions. We already have the image set uh, here. We set it to be set to that image. So this is for a single deployment. If you were using a full one, you would set up a multi-host. So you hit you deploy the task, and it says it's ready. Then we're going to switch to our clone VM and we're going to boot it up. The I have these set to network boot by default, which is annoyingly hard to get to the BIOS on, mm -hmm. on VMs. Okay. So as you can see, it's, it's found the uh, PXE boot and it's booting into fog. Now, because we already tasked it with an image, it's not gonna pull up a menu screen. It's just going to automatically start pulling an image. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Come on now. All right, there we go. And this will take just a few minutes. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna show you guys some more about what the actual fog server does. So on the dashboard, it shows you um, how much imaging you've done over the last couple of days, you can see where on the April 15th we were testing <laughs> mm -hmm. and then to everything we've been doing today. And it also shows the bandwidth of the VM down near the bottom. It, you can see it's, it's pulling because it's imaging. And it also shows you like the web server, like what the IP is, how long it's been up and like what your main username is. Um, one thing you can actually do is you can go to groups and you can create a storage group. So this is like if you had a whole room of computers you wanted to image, you would create a group and put each host in that group. So then when you pushed in, you could push an image to a whole group instead of an individual machine. Let's go ahead and check on how this is. So we got about two minutes left. And you can see it shows you a lot of statistics. Um, it shows you how big the device size is, six gigabytes. Um, it shows you how much time you've got left and the rate that it's running at. Thank goodness I have an SSD. It's it's running at over a, a gig a minute. Mm -hmm. So we've got about two more minutes there. Um, as, so as far as creating a new image, if you want to do capture a new image, you would click create new image. Did he stop talking for anybody else? You give it an Yeah, he's kind part. of robotic talking. Sydney, you're cutting out, unfortunately. It's, it might be the hold that. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yes, sorry. I, it, I just got the notification for low bandwidth. Oh, okay. Give it. <clears throat> oh, man. I hope my internet holds up through this. <laughs> I can hear you now. I can hear you. Okay. So we got minute 14 left on this. Now, average times. Oh gosh, I can hear myself. That's bad. Um, average times on a real network will probably be higher, probably in about the 10 minute range, depending on what type of internal wiring you have. But that's where multicast comes into play. So it may take you 10 minutes to push out an image, but you can push it out to as many devices as you want. Mm -hmm. um, in practice, I've imaged 90 devices at one time and it took it about 15 minutes. 
Okay. And with more nodes, you can do more. I think it's because it, it actually uses the hardware on the individual machine, not the server to, to uh, unzip the files. Right, to install it. It's just the network, sending it through the network to them. Exactly. And this one we used, there's a couple of different um, storage options you can use for images. Mm -hmm. So like if you pick an OS here, you can pick if you want to pick every image and then like every partition. And then you can also choose how you want to manage it. We use gzip for all ours. And then you can also pick the uh, compression ratio. So you just create an image. It'll say up there it's done. And if you go to list images, you'll see. All right, so then this should be. Does it keep track of like hashes and you know, how does it send the data? Does it use encryption? Um, it doesn't use encryption by default. Okay. Although it's, um, I think you can enable it to use, I can't remember which one it was, but it, it does use, I think it actually does use, you can set, you can also set up the actual fog server to use HTTPS. So everything's a program or so everything will be secure that you're doing. Okay. So as you can see now it's, it's booted up after imaging. So if you just mm -hmm. log in, uh, the first login might take a little bit because it's having to load everything in, but this is such a small one. It should be less than a minute. You can see now it shows everything we have in our default environment. It, uh, it runs fine. You can, yeah. I think that's the uh, end. That's the end of my yeah, presentation. The end of your pres okay, excellent, yeah. excellent uh, tool. Imaging, you know, ghosting. That's a extremely uh, useful thing to be able to do. So. Great, great. And, and it can carry Windows and everything, correct? Doesn't yep. It? Yeah, it can even do uh, Chromebooks. And okay. there, there's someone who's actually designed an API to work with Raspberry Pi images, too. Oh, wow. Okay. So really good. Good job. Um, okay. Any questions for them about uh, the topic? Okay, no questions. Are you guys going to present your Hadoop today or? No, we'll be doing that Wednesday. Wednesday, okay, all right, great. Thank you very much, guys, great job. Um, who wants to go next? So keep in mind we have two minutes left, so this will probably be the last group for today. I'll go. And, and then the rest of you will present on Wednesday. So who's next? Uh, I'll present my individual topic project. Okay, just just you, John. Yes. Okay, John Dinga. Go ahead, please. Uh, just a moment. Let me share my screen. All right, can you see it? All right, so the topic I chose for my project is a uh, cockpit. It's a web-based uh, dashboard for uh, managing your servers. Uh, what is it? As their website describes it, it's the easy to use integrated, glanceable, an open web-based interface for your servers. In other words, the GUI web-based dashboard for, perform for performing systems tasks and monitoring servers. Uh, some of its capabilities are viewing system services, system logs, managing and creating user accounts, using the terminal to run commands, managing the network and viewing network logs, managing and viewing storage devices and monitoring hardware usage. Um, some advantages of it are the tasks are easy to perform directly, interacts with and reacts to the system. 
no configuration is necessary, minimal disk space and memory usage, and backwards compatibility with other instances. And this is what the interface looks like. It's pretty straightforward, clean and simple to use. So the basic setup is you would just do a sudo app get install cockpit and it will download all the uh, necessary files. And then what you do after that is you go into your web browser, you put in uh, HTTPS, and then whatever mach uh, machine's IP you wanna use and then the port 9090. And then it'll bring up the dashboard and you can uh, view several tools to um, manage your servers. So I'll just demonstrate it really quick now. And then they'll bring the screen up. What you do is you just uh, put your username and password as usual. And here you could see uh, your hardware information like your processor cores, memory, hard disk. Uh, you can view logs. John, are you uh, this, showing us your the, the, the VM now? Or are you know? Yeah, can you hear me? You you need to share. We're seeing your slides. Oh, okay. I didn't know it wasn't showing it. Up. No, it, that's very common. <laughs> so just share your uh, new share, probably. Okay, sorry. All right, can you see it now? Yeah, we can see a blue screen. Okay. All right, I'll just uh, show you. So you do, for this instance, I'll just do localhost 9090. And then uh, it'll ask you for your username and password, it's just whatever you use to log into your uh, VM. And here you can see this is the main uh, page it'll bring up at first. You'll have your hardware information with processor cores, uh, memory, disk, network traffic, you could see the logs here, uh, storage, reading and writing, and other information. Your network information is all here. You can view all the accounts and change settings with them. Uh, all the services running on your machine. Uh, applications, if there were any. You could run software updates and then you could just bring up the terminal and use it as normal. And then right here is a dedicated dashboard to hardware. And that's about it. All right, so uh, we're looking at memory and, and utilization, right? Right. This is your. Uh, this is a. So CPU is this using right SNMP now. in the background, for instance, or is it a different kind of a protocol? Do you know? Uh, basically, it, you just install a package, and it's all web-based. Um, it's just running off the port ninety. It's monitoring its own self, correct? Right. This is just looking at this VM. Um, I'm, that VM. Yeah. I, okay, I don't have so, it set up for anything right. else. It doesn't moment, need. It, it can this manage other machines, or is it just for monitoring? Yeah, you could use it for multiple machines, but okay. it's just currently set up only on this machine. I don't have it hooked up to anything else. Okay. But yeah, theoretically, you can manage a whole network through this. Uh, you're you were monitoring data there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it'd be interesting to know how it does things. And I see you have like an account so you can create accounts through this. Right. Yeah. You could use it for account management. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically pretty uh, integrated uh, admin tool. Let's do everything all in one place. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Excellent. Very interesting. Are there any questions for John about this topic? All right, no questions. John, are you going to demo your uh, Hadoop? Uh, I, I think I'll do it Wednesday. 
Okay, that's fine. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Yep. Uh, who's next? I'll go. Who is that? Cruz. Cruz. Are you in this class or the well, other? No, technically I'm in the next class. If that's I, a thought, I thought you were in the next class. Yeah. yeah. Should uh, I just go over there or could I still go? I'd rather you present over there, uh, Cruz. All right, that's no problem. I give a slot to someone else, you know. Uh, anyone else? I guess I'll go. John, okay, John. So, John, are you presenting alone or with someone? Um, I won't present my Project B by myself. Okay. Um, how do I do this? Can you see that? Uh, I can see a black screen, yes. Do you see the title or? Oh yeah, Web Webman, no, Webman. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So I did mine on system administration Webman. Uh, basically what Webman is, it's a web-based control panel for system administration, basically similar to what Jonathan did. Uh, but this one allows you to manage users, groups, disk quotas, uh, configure services like web, FTP, email, and database servers. Uh, some of the benefits it has is it removes the need to manually edit Unix configuration files. So you can do it in like in a GUI based system on the web. Uh, it also allows users to manage a system from a console remotely. And it has a built in let's encryption for like a safe mode for webmin users. Uh, I kind of listed how to install it because I've kind of learned that depending on what version of Ubuntu you're using, it's your it's going to be completely different how you install it. Uh, so for this one, you have to do quite a bit of things. You have to um, go to the source.list file and you have to edit it there. And once you're in there, you have to add a respiratory command. And once you add that, you have to save it. And then uh, you have to run a command to get the webman pgb key. And then once you do that, you have to update the respiratory that you added before you can finally install webman on your computer or on your VM. <clears throat> so once you install it, uh, it will provide you with a link or you can just go to a web page and just type this in and it'll give you a Something like this, but it'll be a login page. And uh, once you log in, you'll see this as the first main screen of the dashboard. Uh, and then after you do that, you have to uh, change the certificates when you first log in. Otherwise, uh, next time you do it, it won't let you uh, on there because you don't have the certificates for it. And to do that, you have to go down to uh, System Hostman and you have to click on this. And then you have to do all the configurations to do it. Uh, to achieve the certificate. Uh, once you get the certificate, you actually have to go and encrypt it. So what you do is uh, you have to navigate to the Webmin configuration. Uh, then you click on Let's Encrypt tab, which is this right here. And then once you do that, you have to change the host name for the certificate to your domain name. And then you select the other directory for the web root directory for the validation file, which is this right here. I think you have to type it right here for other directory. And then once you do that, you request a certificate. Um, once you do that, you have to click, you have to go back to the main page and then restart Webman. And then it's going to kick you out to the login page. And you have to re-log in about after 30 seconds or so. Um, once you do that, you can log back in and then you're able to manage uh, users and groups plus other stuff uh, in there, which I'll show in a little bit. And yeah. Uh, how do I change screens here? What was that panda doing? <laughs> oh, destroying a computer. <laughs> <laughs> My frustrations and figuring stuff out. Yeah. Uh, this one, I believe. Can you see that? 
Yes. Okay. So I already got into the web page where you just type this in and just hit enter, it'll take you to this. So once you're here, you just have to log into your user, which is seed, and then you just type in the password. All right, I wish I could make this bigger. Um, so the first thing you're gonna see is the system information. So you can see the CPU, real memory, virtual memory, local disk, excuse me. Uh, then you can scroll down and learn more about the system, uh, stat, stats history, and then more down here, recent logins of disk usage. However, another thing you can do, if you click this little bar thing here, it's gonna show a list of other stuff. So you can see like webmin, it gives you like backup configuration files, webmin users, you click system, gives you like boot up and shut down, change passwords, servers, uh, like in MySQL. And another thing I know is you get like clusters in here for like uh, users and groups. So I imagine um, you could probably do a Hadoop in here, I could guess, because you could do clusters. Um, I haven't tried that out, so. But yeah, so that's pretty much uh, uh, Webman here. And that's about it. Right, so you're managing that local machine, correct? Yes, this particular one I installed it on, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so it's a type of, uh, yeah, like SNMP. Okay. It's basically like a GUI for an editor, so you don't have to go keep going to source files, the source files, you can just do everything from one. Right, that, that's yeah. true. Okay, sounds good. <clears throat> All right. Um, are there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, I do my uh, Hadoop on Wednesday. You'll do it on Wednesday? Okay. Yes. Guys, do you have any questions for John? How do I? How do you stop sharing? Uh, you can go to the bottom and there's a green button, I think. Or... I'll stop sharing. There we go. All right, thank you. All right, uh, so that's so this worked out really well, I think, actually, pretty pretty smoothly. Um, so who didn't present today? Like in general, or who has more to present? Uh, who oh, oh, of the people that are currently logged in right now, who still has to present something? Uh, I, I have I have to present my project um i just i haven't made the powerpoint for it yet okay can, let me I let me re-ask the question it. who had something to present today still who was ready to present today that hasn't presented okay so no one is okay well then i guess ev everyone else will be presenting on wednesday then right yes well we presented okay. a project on wednesday Okay, sounds good then. All right, so great job, guys. I, I you know, I, I think the, the presentations were really informative, you know, very nice topics, everything, you know, all, great job on the Hadoop. I'm glad, you know, it's going smoothly and uh, really interesting topics, right? We got to see a lot of uh, things like ghosting and managing the computers remotely and, um, you, know, you know, downloading files. So re really great job. All right, Professor, uh, Professor Kellex. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, so the the script that uh, the, that wasn't uh, re running remotely, I did figure out what was wrong with it. Can I briefly just display it really quick? Go Should ahead. Like, yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we have to submit our Project B PowerPoint on Blackboard? Yes, you'll submit uh, all of that. I'm going to open a Dropbox and you can just zip it up and put it there. Your report. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so the thing that was wrong with, uh, since this is a remote connection to the slave, before you copy the script files, make sure you specifically, uh, explicitly define the path of the, maybe the text file that you're using in your script or anything that, that you're using with, with- You uh, didn't have the full file. path in there? Yes, yeah, I only had uh, just the Kim group that TXC right, and that's why. Okay. It didn't work, but I can show it to you that it works now properly as it should be. Uh, I'll just do this. Since this is gonna require privilege, it should work just fine. And you can see the changes were made. 
in here and the changes that were made was that I added, if I open up this text file, the account that were added was Bob and Jane. And if I go to settings, as you can see, it was actually added, the new accounts were added in there without little to no configuration, but just basically just blink of one command line prompt. That's it, yeah, thank you. All right, great, thank you. Hey, uh, Professor Kellex. Yes, sir. I have two quick questions for you. Go ahead, please. After these two projects, is that pretty much the end of the semester, minus the exam? Uh, well, think about it. I mean, uh, Wednesday is our last day of classes, correct? You know, classes yeah. and finals are next week. So, yes, you just have to please attend the presentations on on Wednesday, or I'll post the videos, I guess. But watch them, you know, because there could be questions on the exam about these presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but yeah, I mean, just you, you've submitted your labs and uh, you submit, you just have to submit. I need to have like a report, your PowerPoint okay. slides, your code, no need to send like VMs or anything like that. And then you're, you'll sip it. And then that's on that, I will post your grade on that drop. So that that should be open by this week. Yeah, I'll try to open. If you send me an email now about it, I'll reply as soon as I do it, and you'll be the first one to submit. All right, and then my second question. I know you're probably busy, so I'm not trying to rush you, but by when do you think you'll have the stuff graded? I'll try to have every, I know the drop date is May 1st, so I'll try to have everything graded before that. Appreciate it, thank you. No problem. Uh, so you want us to turn in a zip file of Project B and Hadoop? Uh, I will open actually two drop boxes because it's each one is graded individually. Oh yeah, individual zip file of a Hadoop and then individual group. Yes. Of, okay. Yes, with a report. Yes. No, no VM needed. Just you know, you have code or something, but basically a report in the slides. Okay, so you just want like a lab report for the Hadoop since yeah, I need no, to like, have PowerPoint. some kind of doc, some okay. kind of some kind of a document for it. Okay. Any other questions, guys? All right, if there are no questions, we'll stop here for today. And I uh, see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you. All right, thank Good you. job, guys. Thank you. See you Wednesday. End the session now.